everybody to the most chill guy podcast about music out there. Oh, uh, no, I can't believe you did that on this podcast. Now we're going to look stupid. What do you mean? We already look stupid, so what's the difference? Yeah, but now it's to the nth degree. Well, you know, Adam, you know what they say. Game recognized game. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck yeah. <laughs> That shit is fun. That's gonna that's gonna stand up for that's that's oh, gonna, yeah. that's gonna last for a while. That's gonna last for a hot minute. Uh, anyways, uh, <laughs> welcome to All Gas No Trash. I'm Josh, the sidekick, alongside uh, good buddy Adam, the main dude. Yep. Ma- Adam, Adam, main character, energy, fucking the man. Yeah, this is gonna be a short one. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, today we're gonna talk about uh, what Adam, one of Adam's artists that he likes. Yeah, Sedona. Sedona. Uh, but before we get into that. If you want to follow us on social media, you can follow us on Game Rage Magazine on Instagram, TikTok, and also YouTube. That's the most important one where you can subscribe. Also, if you like Twitter slash X, if you like the old Elon app, you can follow us at Game Rage Mag there. Uh, this show you can follow at All Gas No Trash Official on Instagram. And if you like anime and manga, you can go follow Frank at anime underscore syndicate underscore podcast. And uh, yeah, that's it. All right. So let's talk about Sedona. Yeah. So I predict in the future, Mm -hmm. in the immediate future, I can't tell you when, but I feel as though Sedona will no longer be an independent artist and she will be signing with a record label Mm -hmm. in the near future. And when that aligns up, when that lines up, that'll result in her releasing an album in 2025 and release somewhere around 10 songs for her debut album. And that that is all I have to share. (laughs) So you think that she's going to sign with a new... Well, she's no longer going to be independent. And you also think that as a result of no longer becoming independent within... Well, obviously it'd be within the year, because you're saying 2025, you think she's going to release... Her debut album. Debut album. So... Do you think that like the album's already like been pretty much worked on and ready to go? Yeah, I, and I, then she's, she's just made waiting? it known. I mean, she's made it known that she's had uh, like tracks ready? tracks readied up or whatever. But I mean, she's been <clears throat> releasing these singles, but I don't know if they're well, they're they're uh, just one offs or whatever. Yeah. But just the fact that we just keep getting these fucking singles that I don't want to say they're not going anywhere, but if we're already in November, why? Like, what are the odds that she's gonna drop something next week or the week after? It's already uh, too late. That's yeah. It's well because we're getting to like you said before that holiday it's, it's, season. Everybody's gone. Everything's shutting down. Like it's for shutting music, down. Yeah, not until after the first of the year. Yeah. So, do you think that it's gonna be an album of new shit, or it's gonna be like oh, just a compilation of all the singles and stuff that we've already heard? Uh, that I don't know. Mm. I don't know anything about, I don't, oh shit. Well, would your opinion, well, cause this, I'm just asking what your opinion on this is. I'm not, I don't, I don't know. Do you think that like the record, whatever record label or whatever, I don't know, whoever the fuck she signs with, right? Cause mm-hmm. obviously you're not, you know, you don't know who that could be, but if whoever the fuck she signs with, if, do you think they're going to be, oh, we want to change some things. We want to do this. Do you think they're going to come in and you know how like. No, I think. Oh, go ahead. Well, you know how, like, uh, you know, when, like, a new manager comes in for, like, with a band or something, they're like, oh, we're changing things up. We're going to change this up. We're going to do this. We're going to do that. Or do you think they're going to just be like, all right, let's just let you do your thing, but we're just going to give you the platform? Yeah, I think it's something more in line with that because as smart as I believe she is, as business savvy as I believe she is, she's only going to work with the label in the context that they're going to give her exactly what she wants, and it's Mm -hmm. mutually... Mutually beneficial to both, but hmm. any, anything that anything about restraints or her altering herself in any capacity is I don't I don't I don't see it happening. Why do you suspect now is the time for her to sign? Why Why do you think now she's signing or going to sign with a record label as opposed to just remaining independent? Because I think a record label would provide her the resources that she otherwise could not get. On her own, I mean, because when you're talking about releasing an album and trying to to comprise, like, sure, she can comprise a plan, right? Yeah. But if she doesn't have the manpower to tell people, hey, can you take care of my PROs, like my publishing right organization, and make sure that I collect income from my 
money mm. for performance or uh, performance or mechanical royalties? Uh, do you think you can organize my album art? Like all the shit, all the menial tasks that you have to do as an artist, like some of that can be divided amongst four or five people or uh, finding out the financial situation of her music, uh, like how much money she's making, how much is she spending on uh, promoting this music, how much, you know, all the little finer details of releasing music. And if she wants to make a music video, okay, let's create a budget for that. How are we going to do that? Uh, how are we going to get your music the attention that it deserves? Maybe we should be reaching out to public, uh, maybe we should have a public relations agency be supplemental to you so that you can get your music on radio or perhaps, I mean, she's been capable of getting her music played on television she's been able to license her music to television and if a record label is interested in like you know uh her having all rights to her masters and everything but they're just you know working on getting a licensing deal of her music so that you know they collect a little bit of the income but she retains the masters of her music so she could do whatever the fuck she wants with them but they're just there to provide the service. But it it's because they think the music's going to be fucking banging. Like, it's going to be something that they can make bank on together mm. because she can't do all the work by herself. Do you uh, have any guesses as to who you think she's going to sign with? I do. I, th- I think... Uh, I don't want to say who it is, but I, I have a feeling... I think I know who it is just mm. because... It seems like they're trying to turn a new leaf on what would be typically what would be typically expected of them in terms of their management and their label mm. that they're perhaps opening themselves up to artists from different backgrounds and not just what we've typically seen in the last 10 or so years or decade plus. OK, I get it. So you're saying it's basically you think a she's going to sign with some place that's trying to step away from maybe their past history of only exclusively catering to like certain things or certain right. markets or demographics right that right. they're trying to like maybe expand out yeah which i think that makes sense i think that's a good i think that's going to be a good pairing it is i think i think it will be and uh when we talk about independent record labels i mean obviously major record labels are always going to exist right because whatever they provide whatever it is they may provide to an artist, like the global branding or whatever it is to the marketing to push an artist to a global status, right? Yeah. That's always going to be there because people are always going to give into that possibility that they can be turned into a megastar. But perhaps what the reality is, or maybe the dream for smaller independent record labels is to be boutique, to be boutique, but also cater towards an artist needs so much so that maybe they wouldn't be get wouldn't be getting at a major record label because maybe like they're the bottom feeders or whatever it might be yeah. they're getting exactly what they want they get to be more or less independent and they get to control their music and get paid well enough i suppose uh so it's like it's like getting the services that you need exactly while also not getting fucked like that's I think the future possibly of music is more I mean there are numerous fucking independent record labels that exist but there needs to be a reason that people go to those things like there has to be immaculate service in in service to artists that they just simply can't say no to that like sure you're independent and you're maybe not going to be fucking Dua Lipa or or Megan the Stallion or whatever the whatever artist you could think of post Malone you're not going to be mega rich but you know you're going to make all out all right you might be able to retire on your music because you're touring and doing all this shit if you're smart about it right yeah. but you know you're you're not just working to the bone and and having like 80% of your music being collected on by a record label or whatever or even like your management or whatever yeah. they're giving you exactly what you need you're also doing them a service. And then maybe, maybe you reach the acclaim of some of the more important independent record labels like Sub Pop or fucking Mom and Pop or or Polyvinyl or whatever it might be. But it takes 
it takes a village of those smaller record labels to get an artist to that point. That's, that's I don't know if we can go off on a tangent. Yeah, go off on a tangent. All right. Um, when I see artists that start off on smaller rec- record labels, like let's say Pixel Grip, right? They're, okay, on a, yeah. they're on a record label called Field Trip. There, there was an artist, there was a duo called Pearl and the Oysters. Um, they started also on Field Trip, and now they've migrated to uh, a larger independent record label called Stone's Throw that everybody knows, right? Oh, yeah. <clears throat> so instead of, like, sticking around, and maybe it's because... Maybe it's because Field Trip doesn't have the things to get Pearl and the Oysters to where they want to go, right? But it, it kind of sucks when you start off somewhere and somebody offers you greener pastures and you move on because you, you almost have, like, I don't want to say you almost have no choice, but wouldn't you want to stick around for the people that got you to the dance? You know what I mean? Like, Magdalena Bay started with this record label called Lumina- Luminel Recordings, right? It's the same l- record label that Munya is on. Yeah. Because Magdalena Bay has achieved new levels, they now move on to the bigger shark, which is mom and pop records, right? Okay. But Magdalena Bay with Luminel Recordings was good enough to work to get them to Coachella. So why wouldn't they write it out with all the things that they've done? Now they're appearing on television, right? Maybe that's something mom and pop was able to achieve with them, but wouldn't you want to like stick it out with the people that, you know, got you, you know, they, they invested in you. They, I, I don't know. Okay. Like, maybe, but all right, let me, let me counter this point. All right? Okay. All right. Fine. <clears throat> so let's use baseball as an analogy. Cause okay. you know, you love baseball, right? Yeah. So if you're a baseball player right. and you start out in the minor leagues, uh-huh. so you start out in single a, <laughs> Okay, yeah, this team took you in and got you to the dance, right? But yeah. then, like, when you outgrow the the talent level of your peers in the league that you're in, why right. would you not want to move up into the next highest level, right? Right. So, while it's all still baseball, you're just moving up through the leagues of baseball. And I think music, you could probably apply it. You can say that there's, like, leagues of music, right? There's, like, levels of music. Yeah, there's, there's... a minor league. There's, like, you know, maybe there's a a mid-tier league, and then maybe there's, you know, then you got your, like, okay, you got your Post Malone's, your Megan Thee Stallions, as you were talking about, your Beyonce's, those are your fucking, like, it's global, Derek Jeter's, yeah, Yeah, those are, like, your fucking, like, you know, that's your MLB, those are your, like, main fucking top-tier stars, right, those are the anomalies, Yeah. but you also have a lot of people in the minor leagues who make a good living just just doing, playing baseball, minor leagues, right? And music's the same thing. You have people that can make a good living, but it's that whole thing of like, well, if I can go to the next tier of, of level, potentially, within an organization, yeah, maybe I move up. And that's maybe why they, they change to... Now, granted, if you're seeing an increase in popularity, now, I guess it's... If you're going to stay in your same tier... Like, it'd be like a guy in the minor leagues going and saying, oh, I'm just going to go to another fucking minor league team because they can give me more money, right? Like, that's the equivalent of, like, that, right? Where, yeah, maybe it's a little bit bigger minor league team, but it's still, like, you're still in the same league. You're not you're not on a – you're still on the regional level or whatever. You know, I don't know where they're at specifically, but, like, what you were yeah. talking about. But, like, you know, it's like jumping from being a regional to a national level and then from a national to, like, a – you know, regional global level and then to a actual global fucking level, like maybe a hemisphere level or whatever. I don't know. Yeah, I got you. Um, that's kind of where I would see that that being a reason to jump uh, labels or whatever or, or managements, because like if they don't have the capability to support that, you got to go somewhere that can that can get you that can cater to your needs now being in this new level or helping you get to the new level. Now, if you're just going to stay in the same tier, all right, yeah, I, I could see your point. Like, that is kind of fucked. You might as well just stay with the people that got you to the dance, you know? But, I don't know what you think about that. I got, I got a counterpoint. Oh, okay. Yeah, I got a different analogy. What, what if we're talking about, in sports, uh, the start of the NFL, right? Okay. You have, AF, you know, AFL teams. Right. Or all these teams that are just, there's no actual national league just yet, right? There's people that have football teams, but nobody's exactly sure who's actually going to create the first proper league because, yeah, you had, like, the AFL starting off, but then they get absorbed and it ends up becoming the National Football League. Yeah. I I feel like I see record labels in the same way where everybody's just trying to figure out what they are and, you know, maybe 
maybe your team is the Dallas Cowboys, but you don't know where you're at. But if you ride it long enough, you end up becoming that franchise that everybody fucking knows. And I feel like independent record labels can achieve that status. Maybe they're not going to be as big as like Def Jam or fucking Columbia, but there's all these regional fucking record labels that everybody's attracted to for one reason or another that they're niche music, yeah. but, and they all could achieve success, but everybody just goes to the bigger fish because they're under the impression that this is the only thing that could take my music to the next thing. So like, instead of finding out, can we be the Dallas Cowboys? Can we be the team that evolves into the Dallas Cowboys or the when the Green Bay Packers were, you know, or the Chicago Bears or those teams yeah. that were part of like the oldest, they're, you know, one of the older teams in football that they were going to turn into mega franchises for football itself, that they, that maybe artists could see themselves in the same way with their like record labels that we can be established, we can be as big as, uh, you know, as I was saying before, sub pop or polyvinyl or mom and pop, we could be that, but it's going to take all of us, everybody on the roster making banging shit, but nobody wants to stick around long enough because they'll only go to the four or five or maybe 10 different record labels that everybody goes to. If you get, if you catch yeah, my drift. Well, it's I kind of think like that. The reason for that is most people are chasing the money. They're not chasing money. They're not chasing the art. They're chasing the money. Yeah. And or maybe it's a bo- it's a combination of could them, be a yeah. combination of both, but at the end of the day, money fucking is the motivator. motivator. Yeah, that's the main reason why you would switch labels, right? I yeah. mean, unless you were absolutely unhappy with the way that you were giving being given service. Yeah, by the label. Because let's be honest, like, yeah, you guys are are kind of working in tandem, but I mean, the label is working for you. Like, you are doing the work, right? Like, yeah. you are the artist. You're making the shit. They're supposed to be, and same thing with management. Like, they work for you. So I get it. If you're unhappy with the service or the level of of care you're being given, then sure, yeah, that's a, that's a legitimate reason to just tell them to fuck off and go somewhere else. Mm. But if you're going somewhere else just for the straight specific reason of like, oh, these assholes are offering me more money, they're offering me to play at bigger venues. I mean, it's like the Live Nation thing. Like, yeah, anybody who gets offered by any sort of Live Nation affiliated management, of course they're going to be able to offer you this sweet golden goose fucking deal because. They, they own all the venues that are big. Like They're going to plug you in. You're going to sell out shit. You're going to get money. The merch, everything's all fucking tied into one thing. You know, as opposed to these independent, you know, management companies and labels, they, they don't really have that fucking option. They're like, well, we're, we're, we'll get you what we can get you. I mean, yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. Like, so. And maybe, maybe, maybe the football thing wasn't a good analogy. Maybe something more akin to like restaurants like McDonald's existing pretty much in every corner oh, of the yeah, world. Yeah. Starbucks. And then, but then you have smaller local burger chains that are regional to the, like in and out. Yeah. in and out assures fucking quality in every fucking corner that they exist within California and other states. Right. Yeah. Uh, and their level of, of quality and service is unparalleled and everybody knows the name. Even people across seas or even across borders know what in and out is. Right, yeah. But of course they're not the fucking they're not the mega chain that McDonald's is, but people know in and out for their quality, their food, uh, their service, and maybe field trip records can be fucking in and out if if people fucking write it out long enough. But like yeah, yeah I don't but know. But if you if you keep bouncing around then it doesn't if you <laughs> If their artists are bouncing on them quicker than they, you know, because, oh, shit, they get them to a certain point where it's like, hey, man, you get recognized by a bigger label and they're like, oh, we, we got you. We can make you more yeah. money. And then that's what they do. That's how they trick them into being like, oh, so, yeah, I agree. Listen, I do agree with your your point. I do think that people should just write it out. Yeah. Like, you know, hey, man, why wouldn't you want to help make this company a bunch of fucking money if you really are a good talent and like you can do it? Or they had faith in you to begin with. Yeah, and you, when no one else did. Yeah. Oh, where was Live Nation or whatever the thing is when when you were fucking first coming up and they want nothing to do with your ass? Yeah, but only after the fact that you made a million followers. Oh, now yeah. now they want to talk to you, and you're and then you're gonna tell the, these guys who gave you a chance to fuck off like ah that's that's not right that's fucked up. Yeah. So I don't know. Uh, anyways, you got anything else to add? No, that was pretty much right. it. I mean, so Sedona. Uh, I mean, we might have news on that. Fairly soon, if if my predictions are correct. What do, you, what do you think the time frame is like? Do you think this will be announced or finalized before the end of the year? Or do you think it'll be like quarter one, 2025? All right. I'm thinking 
the deal gets done before the end of the year, right? Mm -hmm. But per perhaps, because you don't want to just waste this opportunity to re to reveal this, reveal this artist being on their roster within November or December, right? Yeah. It, it seems like a waste. Perhaps the deal gets done now or in December, and then maybe the announcement, the formal announcement of this record label will say is going to be in mid-January or February. Hmm. All right. Well, potentially. I, potentially. I guess, we'll see. We'll potentially. see. I guess we'll have to see. Yeah. But if I if it ends up happening in December, I'd be very surprised. Very surprised. All right. All right. Good. Fair enough. Well, anyways, if you want to follow us and hear more of our shit, go to Game Rage Magazine on Instagram, TikTok, and YouTube. Also, Game Rage Mag on Twitter slash X. You can follow this show and Adam at All Gas No Trash Official on Instagram. And you can follow Frank at Anime underscore Syndicate underscore Podcast. All right, that'll do it for us. Uh, I guess we'll catch you guys on the next one. Yeah.